It's Friday, you guys. It's a perfect time for some dessert and booze hacks. Oh. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom. Tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you some more food hacks. So it's Friday, which means it's the perfect time to do some food hacking. And last time we worked out of just our plain old regular food hack book. So this time we're gonna tackle some dessert and booze hacks. And the ones I chose this time have all the summer feels. So I have two drink hacks to share with you guys that just scream summer and then three dessert hacks. So when I say summertime dessert to you, what do you think? For me, it's s'mores. So I found three really awesome and super easy recipes in this book that all have to do with s'mores. So I thought that would be perfect for our summertime food hack video. So I'm gonna take you down to the counter and I'll show you what I've been hacking food-wise this time. All right, you guys, so we're gonna start off first with making some boozy watermelon because this has to go ahead and sit in the refrigerator. So we'll do this first, we'll do all the other hacks, and then we'll come back to this. So this basically just says, take fresh, sweet watermelon to the next level by making it boozy. So all we're going to need is some watermelon, some triple sec, some tequila, some water, and some sugar. And we're essentially just going to make a boozy syrup that we're going to pour over these chunks of watermelon pieces so that sounds delicious to me it's almost like making a watermelon margarita so i put a saucepan onto the stove and poured in one cup of sugar a half a cup of tequila half a cup of triple sec and three quarter cups of water and then just gave it a good stir and we're going to go ahead and leave it on the stove top until it gets to a slow boil now it's time to prep our watermelon. So I think I've showed the way I cut a watermelon in a couple of meal prep videos, but I like to cut the ends off of each part of the watermelon so that it won't roll away from you and you can go ahead and stand it up and then you can use the top part that's missing as a guideline on how to just pretty much peel the rind away from the flesh of the fruit. And then I usually just dice up all of the watermelon and just put it in a big giant bowl. We don't care too much for the rind. So now our syrup has come to a boil. We're going to go ahead and pull it off of the heat and just let it sit there while we finish our watermelon. So I just cut it in as many slices as I can in as many different directions as I could so that I can get chunks. There's no specification in this recipe on how much watermelon that we need. It just said put watermelon into a baking dish. So a nine by nine, a 13 by nine, like how big of a baking dish? I wasn't sure. So I only used half of that personal watermelon and filled a 13 by nine. I made sure that none of them were on top of each other and they were all just an even layer so they can suck up all of this syrup that we're gonna pour on top. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pour this right on top. Now it says when you're done, you're supposed to serve it with lime and salt. I think I would have put a little bit of lime juice in this mixture and then sprinkled salt towards the end, but now we're just gonna take it and stick it in the refrigerator. They say an hour or overnight, so we're gonna leave it for quite some time and get chill while we go ahead and prep the other hacks. And so now it is summertime, and like I said, summertime just screams s'mores, and this sounded so good. Good. There's literally so many s'mores recipes in this book and this one just sounded amazing and it ended up being Mason's favorite. So this is a banana s'mores split and it says there can never be too many ways to eat a s'more. This is a yummy camping treat that you can enjoy right at home. It's hot and messy so eat it with a spoon and keep napkins on hand and it is definitely super messy but my kids enjoyed it so so much. So you're going to use two pieces of tin foil because we're going to stick it in the oven to get warm. Warm. We need two bananas, some Nutella, some crushed up graham crackers, some chocolate chips, and some mini marshmallows. So we're essentially going to make a s'more on top of a banana and stick it in the oven. So I started off with my piece of foil and peeled my banana. Now their instructions say to cut only partially down the banana. So the second 
one came out better than the first. I think I cut down too far on the first one. And so as soon as I spread it apart, it broke apart. The second one stayed together a little bit better, but you're really just putting the ingredients in and pushing it together like a sandwich and putting it in the oven. So really, it really doesn't matter how you slice your banana, but you're gonna slice down the middle, spread some Nutella on top, and then sprinkle some of those chocolate chips, roll it up, and then stick it in the oven. So like I said, this one came out a little bit better, but I don't think you need to be too precise. You just need to fill the banana with all of the goodness. So they went into a 400 degree oven for about five to six minutes. That was a perfect enough time for everything to get melty, but not spread out everywhere. And then I just went ahead and sprinkled those graham cracker crumbs on top. Maya was not a huge fan of the cooked banana feel or taste, but Mason just devoured this. He ate his and hers. He said it was the perfect s'more with a warm banana feel. If you guys like banana split and s'mores, this is your treat. Now we're on to the next s'mores hacks. Like I said, there's so many s'mores things in here and it is making a grilled s'more. One of you guys told us to make a grilled peanut butter and jelly one time on a video and we do that all the time. And so now this says, you heard it here first, Nutella is one of the four food groups, hence why it is perfectly acceptable for you to eat the sandwich for lunch or at any meal really and basically you're using pound cake as your bread to make a grilled s'mores sandwich i wish i knew i was going to score some amazing pound cake at sam's but we just stopped at the gas station and bought two of the individually wrapped pound cakes so that i didn't have to go ahead and buy a big box i wish i knew i was going to end up needing it ahead of time so i just unwrapped those little individually wrapped pound cakes and i cut them in half both of them lengthwise so that it almost gave us like two slices of bread and now we're going to go ahead and smear the inside with Nutella now in any of these recipes when it calls for Nutella you can substitute that for any kind of nut butter whether it's regular peanut butter or almond butter or if you're trying to stay away from peanuts completely you can do like sunflower butter or something like that it would work with anything but we just followed the recipe and used the Nutella and we smeared that on one side and then we put some marshmallows on that and then some chocolate chips I tried to keep everything in the sandwich and stuck to the Nutella that I smeared and then we're gonna put the top on our pound cake and we're gonna stick it in a screaming hot pan like almost medium high with some melted butter now I think I would have lowered the temperature a little bit and stood over this it became a little bit more brown than I wanted it to be, but this was the first time I was using pound cake as bread, so I kind of misjudged the temperature. But once I got it brown on one side, I lifted it up and held the untoasted side so I can smear some butter underneath it. I wanted it to still get that crisp on that untoasted side, and I did the same thing for the other one and just tried to get some butter underneath in that pan. I usually do that too when I'm making grilled cheese or something like that so you get that good crisp. And once it was brown on both sides, I went ahead and just pulled it from the pan. That's all we really needed to do was to get the insides warm and gooey and your outside toasty. So a little bit more brown than I would have liked, but you guys, we made a grilled s'more sandwich. Stinking ingenious. Who would have thought of that? Everybody had one piece. I just cut those two and let everybody try it, but everybody was like, make more, make more. I was like, that's why I only got two things of pound cake, so I couldn't make more. All right, we're gonna finish out with our last s'mores hack. And this, you guys, is like those cake in a cups, but doing s'mores. So this says, this is more like instant gratification in a mug. Maybe you just need a little something to tide you over until the next bonfire. But for now, you'll be perfectly content to curl up with this comforting fudgy treat. So essentially, we're making s'mores cake in a mug. And although I had to buy a bunch of different things to make this, this recipe makes two things in a mug so with everything I bought I'd be able to do this a bunch of times 
So we need some brownie mix, a beaten egg, some chocolate chips, some Nutella, some vegetable oil. In that bowl down there is some milk and water. And then we're also going to need three whole marshmallows. And we're pretty much just going to mix this all together and put it in the microwave. Like how simple is that? So you put your three quarter cups of brownie mix into the bowl, one beaten egg, your few tablespoons of chocolate chips, your vegetable oil, your milk and water, your Nutella, again, any kind of nut butter or whatever that you would prefer. And then you're going to go ahead and give that a good mix until you have a nice brownie mix consistency. Once you're done mixing, it's time to fill our mugs. So I got my Trader Joe's coconut oil cooking spray and just sprayed the inside of two standard size coffee mugs and then poured half the batter that we just mixed into each mug. recipe calls for three whole marshmallows because for right now you're going to cut one marshmallow in half and put half in each mug and then stick it in the microwave for one minute after the one minute you're going to stick another whole marshmallow back in there and stick it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds and then once it comes out everything is ooey and gooey and i went and put a couple pieces of some graham crackers in there and we use the graham crackers to scoop up the marshmallow and chocolate cake and it essentially just made this warm really delicious s'mores in a mug so good you guys like amazing hack love these things now we're going to finish off with a cocktail and a frozen drink is right up my alley especially when you're talking coffee so this says if starbucks actually started making these they'd probably see their market share triple this drink is quite possibly the best way ever to get your drink on and it is so good and so easy it's almost like making a mudslide so i got a bowl of ice here and then my snazzy glass from the dollar tree and then they call for vanilla vodka but i actually had some caramel vodka on hand so i was pretty sure that would still be just as delicious so that's what we're going to use i have some hershey syrup to line the inside of the glass and then here's just one of those starbucks frappuccinos i actually picked this up at the gas station the same time that I got that pounds cake because you only need one for this recipe they said you can use any flavor but we're going to use the mocha one so this sounds really 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 good and then the last thing that we're going to need is a blender so I have my ninja here I got this as a wedding shower gift and it's probably my most used gift from my shower so now we're just going to drop in all of our ingredients i put in the ice now i'm going to put in the vodka and i don't have an exact measurement here because bartender by nature i just kind of added in what i thought would be good and now we're going to shake up our frappuccino because it's the mocha make sure you tap the bottom really good and get all of your chocolatey goodness flowing through the bottle and now we're just going to add that to our ice and our caramel vodka that's it you guys three ingredients mix it in the blender and it made this frothy yummy creamy delicious coffee drink so i just took our glass and used the chocolate syrup and just lined the inside of the cup it's nothing difficult just twist the glass around with your hershey syrup until it gets a nice little coating to the inside of the cup very similar like i said to a mudslide and then you just pour this coffee caramel mocha yumminess into the cup. It didn't say to top it with anything, but like I said, bartender by nature, I just, there was the possibilities were endless. So I threw a little whipped cream on top. That's the coconut whipped cream from Trader Joe's, so yum. And then a little bit of chocolate syrup and some chocolate chips. This was so good. I couldn't get my husband to indulge with me. He's not really a frozen coffee drinker, but Paul is, so I got him to try with me and he said he agreed with me it was really good him and I killed the pitcher 
Now here's our watermelon. It's a day or two later. I forgot all about it, but I it by then had sucked up all of the liquid and these were ice cold, delicious little pieces of fruit. Again, I probably would have added the lime juice originally and then maybe just did the water and sugar first, made more of a simple syrup and pulled it off the stove and then mixed in my liquor and lime juice. But that's what's great about these hacks. You can go ahead and tweak them to your liking, but we served this with lime juice and salt and what a way to eat watermelon, you guys. Okay, you guys, so that's it for this time's food hack video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you guys are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I do post a couple of food hack videos each month, one working out of that regular food hack book, and then one working out of the dessert and booze hack book that we worked out of today. And these are just books that I found at the Dollar Tree that I've been really enjoying sharing with you guys. I mean, these hacks are amazing. How easy was that coffee drink mix and oh my goodness it was it's so good and every one of those s'mores desserts each one of the kids just liked it better than the next Maya wasn't so keen on that banana one but Mason he was just over the moon about it everybody loved everything so I enjoy sharing these with you guys and I hope you enjoy me sharing them with you so don't forget to hit that thumbs up button I love you guys all so much and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys